hey guys welcome back in this video we are going to take our previous animation that we created and turn it into a 3d ui animation instead these are the three animations that i created in the previous video i'm not going to show again how i made these and i've also changed the positioning of the keyframes in these three animations and i've also animated profile picture icon i have animated its opacity apart from that's uh, still the same so to create the 3d ui card background what we will do is we will add in s rectangle we'll use the shape system in the fusion page here you can make changes to the corner radius and the overall look of the card i'll just reduce the width a little bit something like this and then i want to extrude it so after the s rectangle type in extrude 3d and if you take a look at it, this is how it is going to look. You can enable the uh, lighting and the shadows over here in the viewport. And I will just increase the extrusion depth to 0 0.02. And this is how it is going to look. If you want to add your own colors to the shape, what you can do is you can use the extrude 3D if you want to have uh, the um, solid colors over here. But if you want to have a gradient or if you want to have a a material with slight opacity then you can add in a background to it connect to the extrude 3d and here you can change the color to a solid color or if you want to you can use a gradient as well which you can control right over here and if you want to you can let's switch it back to solid color if you want to have a red color maybe with slight opacity you can control the alpha over here so for now let's just use a solid color and let's pick a different color from here and then what we're going to do is we want to create more of these shapes i'm going to copy these two nodes paste them down below and let's connect it up like so this will result in a moist 3d take a look at it and on the second rectangle we will reduce the height and you can zoom in and move around the viewport using the middle mouse button and holding the alt key on the keyboard and let's also pull it in front of the shape using the on-screen controls over here something like this let's go to the extrude 3d i want the extrusion depth to be 0 0.01 let's also reduce the width so let's go back to the rectangle over here and reduce the width something like this crank up the corner radius then let's also reduce the height i think that it is a bit too much so let's just reduce that and just move it up like so and now i want two more copies of this so for that what we will do is just adjust this a little bit i will after the extrude 3d add in a, a duplicate 3d and for the number of copies i want them to be three and let's also change the y offset so we have these three copies like so and then go back to the s rectangle and move it up on the y axis now let's just add some text so for that we will use a text 3d which is this tool over here connect that to this merge and let's just type in some text i'm going to be using san francisco display for the font and let's just reduce the size and also pull it in front like so let's select this text 3d and just pull it in front like that we need to extrude this as well go to extrusion and extrude it a little bit position it wherever you want it to be so i'm going to just resize this and position it in the top left corner good you can move around see how that looks and if you want to have more precise control you can also right click in the bottom left corner where it says perspective and change it to top view and here you can just you know kind of zoom in and pull it in front and you know make sure that it is right in front of the shape now you can go back to the perspective view this is what we have so far now what we want to do is we can connect our animations over here so let's just move that over here for now i'm going to paste it over here First of all, we need to add in an image plane 3D to this. Add in a separate Merge 3D for this. It's just um, good if you just have 
these separated out but you can connect it to this first merge 3d as well for the image plane 3d of course you cannot see this particular um, data that we have over here so we need to put it in front using the on-screen widgets over here and just move it right in the middle of this shape over here and again you can zoom in and be precise with this i'm going to go to the image plane 3d and increase its size a little something like that rotate around make sure that it is just touching shape over here and also you can notice that our text is in the air over here it's not touching this background shape so i'll, I'll have to go back and make sure it touches this background shape like so it doesn't need to go inside the shape you can also have these precise controls in the transform section if you hold the control key on the z axis you can move these uh, values in very little amounts so that we have more precise control over it so once you have that then you can hit back out zoom out a little and i can i'm quite happy with the positioning of the image plane 3 over here so if I move too far, then it will disappear. So I just want it to be visible over here. I can copy this mesh plane 3D, paste it down below, and connect it to this merge. On the second one, I will just change the position, make sure it's in the middle, and paste it again. Like so, and again, I'll just make sure it's in the middle over here after this what we will do is add in a camera to this so search for camera 3d and i'll just move the camera over here and after the merge 3d we will add in a renderer 3d take a look at the renderer 3d it is not going to show anything that's because our camera is not looking at the at the shapes that we have created so we have to push the camera back in the z space and now we'll be able to see it now let's create an animation and like i showed you in the previous video we will use this option use target which will continuously keep our card in focus the reason being the target is right on top of this card so let's go to the render 3d and create an animation at the very first frame we want to create uh, animation on or create keyframes on all these three properties so i'm going to right click click on animate transfer group let's go to frame 110 and do the same thing again and this time we'll click on set key on translate group so we have these three keyframes on both these values frame 0 and frame 110 let's go to the very first frame actually let's go to frame 110 and just rotate it slightly something like this maybe let's go to the very first frame and i will just zoom in and maybe change the y position and zoom in even more something like that then we'll go to the spline and uh, select all the keyframes you can click on this icon zoom to fit click on this icon select all and hit f on the keyboard to smooth out the graph let's just play the animation and this is how it is going to look all right so far so good then what we are going to do next is let's zoom out a little and we are going to add some depth into our scene using ambient occlusion and if you add in this node called ambient occlusion which will go after the renderer 3d as you can see this node is asking for this input which is the camera so we're going to take the output of the 3d camera and connect it to this ambient occlusion and if you view it and it's going to be red because it does not have any data to see so we have to go to the renderer 3d and change the type to hardware renderer and you can also change this to float 32 for the texture depth and we will go to the output channels and enable the z channel and the normal and now you can see ambient occlusion working it does not look great but we will fix that in a moment 
and then you can also enable vector if you want to enable the motion blur in this 3d scene so now let's go to the ambient occlusion over here and switch the output mode to color and also let's just reduce the corner radius and now you can see we can get these shadows and it just adds that bit of depth in our scene over here now you can combine multiple of these so if i copy and paste it again connect the camera to this and you can maybe this time increase the lift let's just take a look at it this is how it's going to look maybe let's just change the lift and see what that does yeah so you can play around with that what i'm going to do is i'm going to animate the shapes as well so let's just uh, go ahead in the rectangle over here and go to the very first frame create a keyframe on a z offset let's go to frame 60 create the same keyframe and on the very first frame we will just move the position and move it away till it disappears from the frame over here and also let's go to the spline over here and click on this icon zoom to fit select all hit f on the keyboard and just ease it into 100 let's take a look at it and we have this sort of animation i want to have some delay in the animation so i can go to the duplicate 3d over here and set the time offset to negative 25 can play, play around with the values and uh, let's just quickly save the work as well you can see that they will appear one after the other so yeah, there you go that's how easy it is to create this animation let's turn on our second ambient occlusion maybe i just want to have a little bit of kernel let's just increase the kernel radius a little bit something like that and change the lift as well so that we get some nice uh, depth in our scene over here then if you want to you can add in some background to this let's take a look at it Control t on the keyboard to swap the inputs on the second background you can play around with any color that you want all right, so as you can see the background looks pretty bland it does not have that information of depth in it the background card over here so what you can do is you can add in an ambient light to the scene and connect that to the emerge 3d and in the render 3d we will enable the lighting option and then play around with the intensity over here and go to transform and change the z position as well and see what that does um, all right so if you're not happy with the slide then you can of course use something like a directional light you can use a spotlight just play around with different kinds of lights over here and this one is uh, lighting the scene from the front but you can go to the transform and change the position and I'll use this option use target go to merge 3d and you can see the light over here uh, but let's just change the position maybe move it over here something like this and let's just move it over here and see what that does okay so that's not bad at all you can use this as well now let's just light it up a little bit maybe something like this increase the brightness a little change the position um, and you know you can create some really cool results out of it have these animated as well right here we have the final animation yeah that looks pretty cool and this is just the tip of the iceberg it's just the beginning you can do so much more you can add bender 3d you can do all sorts of stuff in the 3d and fusion yeah that is pretty much it that's how you can create this animation i hope this one was helpful i hope it will help you in your current projects thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one